Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour, ni hao, sin chao. What's up? It's me, Mr. Jordan. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 19 of The Handmaid's Tale. We'll start with a brief recap and summary, then we'll get into a close reading, do some line by line analysis, and we'll finish with vocabulary, context, and definition. Chapter 19 starts section 7 of the book, Birthday. The quick summary here, Offred eats an egg for breakfast, very symbolic, and then is interrupted by the birthmobile, which is coming to get her, to take her and the other handmaidens to Janine's birth, literally her labor. Offred gets into the birthmobile, sees the other four handmaidens there. This is an opportunity for them to interact but it's also very similar to them being transported like prisoners to the birthday where a foreign Janine is gonna be giving birth. She's already gone into labor. Let's get into the close reading and line by line analysis. There's a lot of symbolism and ruminating in this chapter on eggs, on fertility, on faith and charity. There's also this possible suggestion by Offred that she's being drugged, or that maybe she's losing her sanity, or her kind of grasp on reality is slipping away. She's slipping farther from matter and life as she's disembodied. I think Atwood uses the narrative arc here and sort of soars away from it to mimic this idea that Offred's mental capacity or her thinking is swerving. And so Atwood makes this quick gesture, maybe even like rushing through the streets and the birthmobile is literally and physically swerving around. The thoughts and ideas in this chapter swerve around. Quote, I sit in the chair and think about the word chair. It can also mean the leader of a meeting. It can also mean a mode of execution, like the electric chair. It is the first syllable of charity. It is the French word for flesh. None of these facts has any connection with the others. So this is the idea of chaos, right? The randomness, the chaos, the underworld is coming up and taking hold. This could also be connected to this idea of chaos as mother nature, right? And the things that can't be controlled by the state and society, such as a birth or a labor. We're told the egg cup that she eats out of looks like a woman's torso. And under the skirt, there is a second egg being kept warm. It's like a moon. So this reference here to Deanna, to nature, mother nature, and a barren landscape, yet perfect. Quote, a barren landscape, yet perfect. The sort of desert saints went into, so their minds would not be distracted by profusion. God must look like an egg. Pleasure is an egg. If I have an egg, what more can I want? There's definitely this idea of dilation and thoughts expanding, possibly having a bit of an out-of-body experience here. Then she tells us, I slice the top off and eat the contents. So she's, she's imbibing, right? She's becoming a part of the world. She's becoming a part of nature. She's accepting it into herself. So the egg here is both Offred and her missing daughter. It's the possibility of her new pregnancy with the commander. It's her value being measured by the society in Gilead. It's also likewise her freedoms being cut off, right? When she chops off the top of the egg, the decapitation of the women's individuality and their choice and their freedom to act. They're being decapitated so their only value is here, is, you know, in the womb, shoulders down. The same way in the ceremony, she's described as her lower body, right? She's being cut in two, she's being divided. During the flashback to the Rachel and Leah Center, the Red Center for Reeducation, there's also this second image of graffiti. So again, this idea of the palimpsest is coming up over and over. It's really one of the strongest themes in the book, this idea of history being rewritten, the same way 1984 by George Orwell is being rewritten by Margaret Atwood in 1984. The literal example of graffiti here is that old students have scratched their names into the desk and initials, right? So this classic, like, Janine was here, or Luke plus Leia, or Jacob plus Rachel, J plus R and a heart. We've all seen it before. But now there's a new context, new circumstances. And Offred tells us, 
now the graffiti seems, quote, lavish, decadent almost, immoral, like the orgies of barbarian regimes. What? The orgies of barbarian regimes? That's really intense. That's a whole lot to gain from this small little memory. And what it really signals, I think, is how much off-red has now become inculcated by Gilead and these new ideas, how far away her sense of individuality is how unimaginable the idea of being a student and writing your initials on the desk because you have a crush on someone, that is a whole different world now. She's out in the desert, wandering like a saint, looking for some sort of penance or hope. We see how far off path off red has gotten. Again, this idea of her being off, right? Off red. Her circuitry is unwired here. As promised, Aunt Lydia and Gilead and the totalitarian state has completed its process of brainwashing here. The narrator is no longer who she once was. She's been erased. Let's get into some vocabulary now. A delusion is when your belief and reality don't connect. So when the belief shifts from the evidence and practicality and tangible things around a person. So if you're wandering alone in the desert, you might be delusional. You might be seeing something that isn't there, imagining an oasis, for example. Congeal. So congeal is when something takes shape. Again, it's this idea of a state change, but it's when, when things coalesce, so they start coming together. A proclamation is a public announcement or a sort of official declaration. And we're told here that the siren of the birth mobile is a proclamation. So, in other words, it's officially announcing to everyone a baby is being born. A huge deal in Gilead. Pious means to be devoutly or intensely religious. It can also mean to be hypocritical or hypocritical in your display of virtue. So, two sides of the same coin here for Atwood. Pious of hope can also mean a sincere hope that's unlikely to be fulfilled. So, in that sense, many of Offred the narrator's desires are pious, right? She hopes for these things that are unlikely to become true. So she hopes piously to see her daughter, to see Luke, to return to her past life in America. Lavish is something that is sumptuous, rich, extravagant. It comes from the French laver, to wash. So it's this idea of like, you know, making it rain with money. You're being lavish, showering it down. Decadent, it's a word we usually associate with um, richness or indulgence or luxury. Decadent actually meant the idea of moral decline. So the excessiveness of state, it comes from the French idea of decadence was of decay. So the most common usage now is actually a confusion or uh, a sullying of the word. Boom, chapter 19 done.